projects. We have a beautiful project from Abby Kirsten, who is going to be making paper flowers. And with me, we're going to be doing a citrus strip tumbler. So if you are watching this live, we would love to know where you are from. Comment below and let us know where you are watching. You're going to make sure to watch all the way through to the end of this live because we are going to be giving away a Cricut Maker 3. And also, if you haven't had the chance, you guys, be sure to enter into the giveaway for a Disneyland trip. That's right. Creative Fabrica is going to be choosing one lucky winner to be going to Disneyland. And we're going to be doing that live on Thursday, same time, same place right here. And we're so excited. So for this project, we are doing one paper flower so much fun. These are one of my favorite crafts to watch be made. So we're going to introduce Abby in with us. Be sure to let us know where you are watching from. And also be sure to give StreamYard access if you're watching from Facebook so that we can have your name to enter into the drawing at the end for the Cricut Maker 3. So we're going to go ahead and bring Abby in. We're so excited. Abby, hi and welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Holly. Of course. So where are you coming to us from? Where are you crafting from? So I am in Orlando, Florida. I've lived in Florida almost my whole life. Um, so we are in the Sunshine State. Yes, you are. So I'm sure you have some beautiful weather. We have people coming in from Iowa, from Georgia, some that is um, in the south from me, live from cold New York. I'm sure you guys are freezing up there. I've seen lots and lots of snow pictures, and I have to say I'm a little jealous. Don't be mad. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. Um, hello from Virginia. Hi, Miss Donna. We're so happy that you could join us. It's so amazing to watch where all of you guys are tuning in from, and we're so excited. Hi. Kathy says hi, Abby. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> So, Abby, um, I know that you're doing one of my favorite crafts, like what I said, is the paper crafting flowers. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, if you guys are ready. Oh, yay. If you, you right here. <laughs> too. I also want to add, you guys, if you um, wait for after the live, you're going to you're going to want to stay tuned with us. Hey, Naomi, Hi, you're going to want to stay tuned in with us so that you can have your chance to enter into the giveaway at the end to win a Cricut Maker 3, which is such an amazing giveaway. You can do so many things. Mm -hmm. um, both of our projects that we're using today, we both used with our Cricut Maker 3. And so we're, go, we're going to give you guys a chance to win one of those. So if you guys are ready, let's start the craft. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm up first. And um, like Holly already said, we're going to be making paper flowers. So we're going to be doing one of my poinsettia designs here today. Um, and you can find links for these Creative Fabrica. I have a shop on there and they're providing them. So you can go and download the template so you can follow along. Um, I'm going to walk you through uh, how I would make these step by step. And we, I am using my Cricut Maker 3. So that's this machine right back here. I'm not going to um, run the machine in the background because it just makes a ton of noise, but I'm going to walk you through everything I would do to lead up to that. Um, and then if you guys have specific questions for me, like for cutting out things with the Cricut for paper flowers, just feel free to ask me. Um, okay, okay, so I'm going to switch my camera view down here so you guys can see my space. Oh, they're so pretty. There we go. <laughs> so intricate. Yes. Um, they're a lot of fun. Like, they're so, like, because there's so many flowers in nature, you know, you can make them in paper. So it's, like, endless possibilities. Um, okay. So uh, first, I'll just cover kind of the supplies that I use in general because I get that question a lot. Um, I like to use hot glue gun for most of my craft, my paper crafts. Um, you can use, like, liquid glues, but I like the hot glue because it grabs immediately and then, you know, you can like move on to building the flower. It doesn't take as long. Um, so hot glue gun is my adhesive here. And then of course you'll need paper in whatever colors you would like. I use cardstock. So uh, 65 pound to 80 pound is usually best. 
Um, I usually like to stick with 65 pound because there's enough flexibility to it for like curling and stuff. Um, but it also holds its shape really well. Like, okay. Do. I do have one question. So 65 mm -hmm. pound versus 80 pounds. Yeah. Which one is thinner? So the 65 pound is thinner. Okay. Um, it has more flexibility. So like this is a 65 pound. I think, I think this one's a little bit thicker. Yeah. So it got a little more stiffness to it. So it's the oh, 80 pound. Okay. Yeah. And then like you can find the equivalent in grams. So I think like uh, 65 pound, I think it's like 176 grams or something like that. So I know different like conversions. It might read differently on certain packages, but just look okay. for that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so you can make these poinsettias in like any colors you want. Um, traditionally, poinsettias are red, pink or white. Um, so that's what I recommend for like if you want to go more traditional, but you can make them in other colors too. I've done them in like a gold as well, which is really fun. Um, if you want to try something different on that end. Um, okay, so as far as cutting out like the designs go, um, I'm using my Maker 3. You could use any of the full size machines. Um, you could even use the Joy probably. Yeah, you could use the Joy because it's small enough. Um, and then I would use a light grip Cricut mat usually. Um, I have used like the green standard grip mat too, but usually I like if it's been used a few times, you know, so it's not like super, super sticky. Um, and then I would just load this template up in Cricut Design Space. You can scale it to different sizes or leave it at its default. Um, but then I'll place the, the cardstock on the mat. And if your mat has been like super well used and the paper like is like not sticking super well, use um, a brayer tool. Cricut makes them, other brands make them, but it's like super helpful for pushing that uh, material to the mat, especially. Perfect. So the brayer is just going to lay yeah. that down, that down easily. And exactly. Easily. Yeah, exactly. So that it like doesn't, because um, even if it seems like it's sticking well, there could be little pockets of air that you don't realize. And that's when it tears like the cardstock. If you're like, if it's not pressed all the way, like across the entire surface of the cardstock, that's when tears can sometimes come in. So making sure that your mat has like, is clean and you're using a brayer to like push it to the mat, it really helps. Um, eliminate the possibility of tearing. And then I would use the medium cardstock setting for this um, in design space. So there's a medium cardstock setting. Um, if you're experiencing any additional issues with like tearing and stuff like that, you can always try cardstock for intricate cuts. Generally, you don't need to use that for this project though, because it's not very intricate. Um, but that's just a side note and a tip. Like if you're experiencing that problem, check your blade, check your mat, um, use that brayer tool and then try cardstock for intricate cuts if medium cardstock isn't working for you. Perfect. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to put this in the machine because it's going to make a lot of noise, but I did cut. Yeah. Um, so Naomi has a great question. Oh, can yeah. this be used? Can these be made using felt? Can you use the same template with felt? Yeah. So that's a great question. And so, um, I get that a lot. You can do it. I have people who've done that before. You're probably going to lose a little bit of the like depth and shape of the project just because the felt like, depending on what felt you're using. Um, if you wanted to get really creative and like use a felt stiffener and like sort of try and curl the felt and then stiffen it, I suppose that you could get more like 3d look, but if you're going to use felt, I would say use it more for like a, more two-dimensional approach, not so much a three-dimensional approach, but um, you could absolutely still do that. So I've had people who've done that and they'll just do like a couple of layers of the templates and they'll put it onto like like a stocking or something like that. So if you yeah. wanted to go that route, then yeah, you could definitely give it a try. Perfect. Katie says these are so pretty. I <laughs> definitely agree. Thanks, Katie. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to cut them out on my machine, but I have one here that I did cut out. And um, this is a super fresh Cricut mat. So we all know when it's like super fresh that sometimes we get like the curling with our cardstock and stuff like that. And if you haven't tried it yet, then that might be something you'll run into. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend is you just flip the mat upside down when you're removing the material and then work to peel the mat away from the material rather than the material away from the mat. And yeah. that's gonna help with the curling quite a bit. So I'll get the excess off first. Perfect. And that is such a good tip because these yeah. cricket mats are made to be bendable and flexible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Kathy says, can you use faux leather? I have personally never used faux leather, although I do think I had one person 
um, try it once where they just, again, they sort of just layered the leather together and I think they turned it into like a keychain or something. So oh, it's definitely possible. I would say, yes, it's definitely possible just to experiment with it. Um, I would recommend the thinner faux leather rather than the, the thicker one if I was going to give any advice on that. Yeah, so for like these, easy. you can just sort of peel them off gently where you're kind of working on curling the mat more than the material. And you can see it's not getting like super bent and curled there. And that works much better than trying to use like, I haven't used my little spatula tool in years because I just always do this and it just works so much better. <laughs> yeah, so just bend the mat. Yep, exactly. Okie dokie. So here we have all of our cutouts for our flower. You'll see in the templates, um, the similar setup as far as like the larger one, these two, and then these two sizes. And we're gonna layer these together. But before we do that, we need to actually like shape the, the paper itself. Um, so there's two ways you can do this. Um, and I've done it both ways. You can use something as simple as like a spare glue stick or a pencil or something like that, and just come in and curl it if you want and yeah. keep it very simple like that. Or what I like to do to take it to like the next level, and this is just completely optional, but it's what I like to do. Um, I have a tool set here. This is my paper bloom shaping mat and tool set. This is something I've created, but um, you can find them out there. And it's a, a rolling ball tool, kind of like Ooh. a clay molding tool. And I use it to actually add like little ridges and veins to the leaf. I don't know if you can see that very well. Oh that. yeah, but how like, neat. It adds just that little extra pop of detail to where it just makes it come to life that much more. So um, I'm gonna show with that approach, but you can absolutely skip this step if you don't wanna go this route because it does take a little extra time and then you know, um, this having the tool set. But what I'll do is I'll just give it some light pressure down the center and then I'll add sort of little- Yeah, so you're just adding detail. Yeah, adding detail to the paper and I'll go around for each one like that. This is my daughter's favorite thing to do. She just sees me doing it. She's like, mommy, can I help you with that part? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah. So this uh, this just adds more detail to it. Yep. And then the other one um, would make it just more of a kind of a crisp design without mm -hmm. the detail. So exactly. Tammy yep. says these will look beautiful on gifts for, gifts for Christmas. I use pattern cardstock to make these. These are so pretty. That would be a great idea to add these as a little pop of yeah. extra with your Christmas wrapping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great use of it. There's so many uses for paper flowers. You can put them on wreaths. You can do like a table arrangement. You can use them for napkin ring holders, like put them on like a napkin ring holder for like a table display. Yeah, um, There's lots of ideas. So after I get the ridges added on, if that's what you want to do, um, I usually then grab, well, you can actually use this or a glue stick. Um, and then I'll still add a bit of a little curl to each petal here. And I just go around. And... That's such a good idea. I never would have thought to add the creases. I love that tip. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. And it applies to a lot of different flowers and really makes them come to life. So then I'll flip them over so that the, um, the curl is facing down. And I'll take the center here and I'll just roll it with another one of these tools and it helps the center stand up. So the petals are kind of coming to life now and they look more 3D. Um, so you can do that, but if you don't have this or don't wish to get it, then you can just sort of bend them up as well. That's another option. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to go with this route. So that's, there's two ways to do it. You don't have to have this. And I would repeat that for all of these um, layers here. I have some already prepped, so I will fast track it a little here. And we got those. So you just do that with each of these. And I'm gonna add the ridges here. Perfect. I think you guys are loving this as much as I do. Um, we had a comment that said that they are going to add these to their Christmas tree, which is another great idea. Yeah, yeah, I've done that too. That's a great idea. Yeah, you can add them to the Christmas tree. You can even, if you make them smaller, like if you make a mini size, you can even get like large ornaments and like add them to like the top of an ornament and sort of like decorate existing ornaments with them as well in a like unique way. But yeah, Christmas tree, really fun. Yeah, yeah, so the creativity here is literally endless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And curls all the way around. 
So you guys, just to remind you guys, you are going to be getting this template from Abby um, free and you can grab that um, on the Creative Fabrica website. And we also will have all of these links for you guys in the description. Another yeah. great idea is to add these to gift bags. Yes. Mm -hmm. good idea. Yeah, gift bags would be great. All right. So finishing up that and then I'm going to just add curl to this one and then we can start layering it together. Let me make sure my glue gun's still turned on. <laughs> it likes to power off on me there. And then as far as like the center of this goes, I like to add little pearls to the center, but you could totally make that your own. So if that's not the look you want to go for, then, you know, don't worry about it. Like you can use other colored beads or even just add an additional center and just stop there and not even add anything else if you want. Um, but that's what I do. So I'll be featuring just some flat back curls here because I kind of like that elegant look. Yeah, I love that. I'm sucked into this now. I'm like, <laughs> this is so much fun to watch. All right. So we have all of our petals prepped. I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to work in um, order of size. So we'll start with this one first. And you can kind of just leave it kind of as it is. You might need to flatten it just a little. And I'll just add, oops, my glue is all stringy. Naomi says, add the cart. <laughs> <laughs> and add a little bit of hot glue and then we'll place one of these and what you want to do is you want to aim so that the petals are alternating each other so the one that's on the bottom the next one is alternating and the petals falling in between mm -hmm. and then you'll just repeat that so this is a really good um, craft a really good flower for beginners so if you're like never done this or maybe you're a little intimidated to try this one's really simplistic and it's a good approach um, for a beginner. So don't be afraid to download it and give it a try. So sweet says, just thinking about these puts me into a festive holiday. <laughs> giving the same sister. Yep. I was in the holiday mood like October 31st. So oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. So we're adding in that one and then we'll add one more. And I like to say at this point that like, if your flower comes together differently, that's okay. So if this piece here, if you're like, oh, I feel like it's hard to get in or I don't want to add that extra piece or I do want to add an extra layer, that's perfectly fine. Like everybody's flowers are unique to them. No flower in nature is exactly the same as another. So just embrace like how yours turns out. One comment says simple, but so elegant. And it's true. It it looks so intimidating when you show the final product. But as I'm yeah. watching you step by step, like, mm -hmm. wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. There is the essence of the flower. Now you can leave, you can add leaves or you can leave them off if you want. That's really up to you. Like this white one I did here, I added the greenery to the base. Um, so I don't build from the greenery because sometimes I want to add it or sometimes I don't. So I leave it off to the end. And then if you do want to add it, you can add those ridges again if you want, or if you just want to add a little bit of a curl just so that it has life. My biggest tip for paper flowers is don't, ever just make like layer them without adding any life. Always add some curl or some ridges or something like that. Um, don't just like layer it flat because it's never gonna, that's never gonna look like a real flower in nature. Um, yeah. But just add some life to it, even if it's just a tiny, tiny bit. Yes. T Moore says, I love it. Now that I know what to do with that toolkit in my shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'll just place the green base on there like that. And then again, you can stop at this point if you want. Um, I like to add some little flat back pearls. So I like to do them in white, but you could get them in like if you wanted to do gold or silver or something else. Um, craft stores, of course, always have all those in different colors. Um, so I'm gonna do these to match the rest of them. Perfect. And I just do a little bit of hot glue. Um, you can use a liquid glue at this part if you're afraid of like burning yourself. I've gotten so used to it over the years. <laughs> I, just, I just go for it. And I'll add three usually to the center because things with flowers look better in odd numbers. So, oh, I didn't know that. That's a good yeah. tip. Yeah, things always look better in, in odd numbers. So if you're doing these in like an arrangement or something, um, see, there I go getting glue on myself. Um, so if you do these in like an arrangement or something, go with like three, five, seven, like do them in odd numbers because it's going to come together and it's going to look better to the human eye 
if you work in odd numbers. Miss Phyllis says, love using the pearls. They add so much. They really do add that, that yeah. final touch that looks, yeah. makes it look so finished. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that is essentially it in a nutshell. So obviously you guys already have like a million ideas for how to use these um, gift bags, things like that. I love to put mine on a wreath and I actually finished my wreath the other day. So I'll show you guys here an example. Oh um, my goodness. Here, actually, let me put my, so you can all see me and I can hold it up here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, how beautiful. Yes, yeah, so, so, Abby, you are definitely the master of beautiful paper flowers. Awesome. And I have to agree. Danielle says, How cute! Yeah, yeah, that so, is so many ways to use it. <laughs> yes, that is absolutely beautiful. You guys might hear my dog barking, that is just part of the live. No. <laughs> so, are there any other tips that you have for paper crafters? Just dive in. Like, I know paper crafting can sometimes feel intimidating because if you've never done it before, you're like, it's paper. I'm going to, like, just squash it or ruin it. But just dive in and give it a try. Um, and if you guys have questions along the way, of course, feel free to ask me. You can ask me on social media or send me an email. Um, I love helping people work with paper crafts. I've made hundreds over the years. Um, but my best advice would be just give it a try and have fun with it. Yeah. So do you guys have any questions for Abby? We have... Um... Some, all the comments coming in are just how beautiful those paper flowers um, are. Abby, they really are gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> so these, again, will be available for you guys to download for free for a limited time. But Abby, you also have other templates in your Creative Fabrica shop. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of other flower designs in there, too. Um, pretty much if it's a flower in nature, you'll probably find it in there. We have sunflowers, roses, peonies, other things like that. So um, mm -hmm. if you want more designs and you just sort of want to dive into the world of paper flowers, then you can go check out my shop on Creative Fabrica and you can find a bunch to download there. Amazing. One comment is <laughs> where can they find those blue instruments? Yes. Yes. So um, these here, the mat and the rolling tool set, which is currently covered in a bunch of glitter. Um, you can get these um, on my website, abbykirstencollections.com. If you just go there and in the menu, you'll see a shop option. If you click on that, you'll be able to scroll through the shop and you'll find a link for this right here. Yep. There's a um, and it comes with four tools and then the, the shaping mat, which helps you. This is like a, sort of like a special foam, basically. And it allows you to put pressure on the paper to create like those details and ridges and stuff like that. Yeah, so you can do that without tearing. Mm -hmm. Abby, does the heavier cardstock make your flowers sound crunchy? <laughs> so neat. Yeah, I I don't tend to, like to me, heavy cardstock is if you're going over 80 pounds. So that I always use like 65 pound or 176 gram. And it doesn't um it doesn't really make them crunchy. It's just enough to where it holds the shape. Um and it's flexible enough still to work with the paper. Wow. Um, so I recommend just making sure, like definitely don't use like 100 pound cardstock or 110 pound cover weight. That won't work well for paper flowers. So anything like 65 pound is going to be good. And that's the most popular usually. So it's usually okay. easy to find. And you can grab those at any craft shop um, mm -hmm. local to you. Sorry, my phone is going off. Okay, would faux leather hold the shaping? Um, so probably wouldn't hold the shaping like paper. Like I said, with like the faux leather, I would recommend doing it kind of from more like an applique approach for lack of better expressions, where maybe you just like did it on more of like a 2D and maybe you were like sewing it to like, I don't know, like a purse or you wanted to turn it into like a keychain that was more like 2D rather than 3D. Um, that's how I would use something like that. Um, the reason that the paper works is because you can you know, curl it and it holds just enough shape. When you're dealing with things like fabric, unless you're using like a fabric stiffener, um, you're probably not going to get the exact same result. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you guys have any questions left for Abby before we move on to our next project? Um, we will be happy to answer them. So drop them in the comment box and Creative Fabrica will pull those up for us so that we can answer them. What's your favorite flower to craft and create? Abby? Oh, my. Oh, that's a hard question. Um, I probably would say roses, though, just because they are a little more challenging. But in the end result, is just like it looks very lifelike. They're one of those paper flowers that you can really bring to life. And when you master a rose, you just feel like you're the queen of crafting. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, I would definitely agree. Yeah. Um, even the little butterfly behind you, is that paper crafting as well? It is. Yep. Yeah, that, so that's um, cardstock. And then I use heat transfer vinyl for the black. Um, so I love using iron on on cardstock as well. Um, it's really fun. Use it with like cards or just other crafts that have intricate things to them to where cutting it out in paper is challenging sometimes with certain intricate things. But if you do it on like iron on vinyl and then apply it to a cardstock base, then it works really well. So yeah, that's iron on and cardstock together. Ah, <laughs> oh, and can you make these papers with crepe paper? I can make the flowers with crepe paper. So you technically can. However, with crepe paper, the difference is crepe paper has ridges in it. So they'll have lines that run like vertically on the on the crepe paper. And the reason why I don't recommend the crepe paper for this particular design and some of the other designs in my shop is because you want those ridges to be running parallel to each petal shape. And if you're cutting this out um, on crepe paper, then the ridges are going to basically end up a bunch of different directions since there's petals going all different directions. So I do have crepe paper flower tutorials that are separate, but the way I design the templates is each petal is added individually with crepe paper uh, rather than in like a layer like this. Okay. Um, so it's a different approach. You can definitely give it a try. Um, I just recommend using tutorials and templates that are more set up for the crepe paper flowers, which I do have those as well. Yes. Roberta says, I tried making a big rose. I love the color green and it ended up looking like a big cabbage. <laughs> that um, is the beauty of crafting, trial and error. Yeah, it happens. And you know what? Instead of a cabbage, it could be like a succulent, like a giant succulent flower. Yes, so yeah. true. Yeah. I truly believe there is no mistakes as you're learning a new craft. Um, mm -hmm. You get to make some amazing things, but then it also turns on those gears of, like you said, what can I make this into? And so yeah. succulent is such a beautiful idea. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Abby, so much. We're going to dive into our next craft now. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a beautiful tumbler that has an etch design with a citrus strip. So let's get into this craft. Okay. So these tumblers are really easy to find. I grabbed this one from Walmart. You can get these at Target. Um, you can even get these at the thrift store, which I found was an amazing way to find these. Uh, and it gives it that beautiful finished look. And it's so easy to make. These are so popular right now. They are trending in the craft world. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of both of these projects are these are great Christmas gifts that you can give to your family and friends this year. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go ahead and get started started with this. I'm going to turn on my camera and then I'm going to just bring you guys down here into the craft area. <laughs> so for this project, we are going to be working on this. Like I said, this one came from Walmart. I think it was around $5. I went ahead and cut my design and I'm going to give you guys access to this design too as just a thank you for watching along with us. For this project, I'm going to be weeding the negative. So usually the pieces that you would leave on to apply onto a tumbler are going to be the ones that we remove. So just very gently and easily, I'm moving this away. Abby, have you made a citrus strip tumbler yet? I have not. I have not. I've made a few tumblers before, but you are definitely the queen of them. Like if I <laughs> don't have a question, I just go look at your page. I'm like, oh, how does Holly do it? She'll know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, let me know if you have any questions with this process. This is so much fun and it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. And yeah. they make a beautiful finished project. Yeah. So this monogram, like I said, you guys will be getting um, for free for a limited time on the website. And oh, as you can see, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, we just had a guest saying she should be cleaning her house right now, but I'm watching this instead. <laughs> uh, same. <laughs> yep, pretty much always. Yes. You, know, always, you just got to make time for crafting, you know? Yeah. So I'm just moving everything away. You you guys will be getting the monogram free. And then for the name, I used a font. It's called Sawange. You can get that um, on Creative Fabrica as well with your uh, membership. It is included. And then if you guys have not signed up to be a part of 
um, the Creative Fabric of Family. We have amazing Black Friday deals that I will be announcing with you on our live on Thursday when we will be giving away a trip to Disneyland. Can you even imagine winning that? that that's like a life-changing giveaway. Yeah, so fun. I live in Orlando, so we have Disney World here. Um, and yeah, it's so much fun. Like my kids are always asking me to go to Disney and it's obviously not cheap. So to win something like that is incredible. It is. It's absolutely incredible. So as you can see, I'm leaving lots of extra vinyl with this. I want to give myself lots of room to work. So I know it's so brave doing this with the tiny ones. It <laughs> is easier to do these with like the bigger designs, but I've had such amazing results um, with this. So I'm leaving myself plenty of vinyl to add as kind of a protective barrier so that we don't get to stitch or strip on any part of the tumbler that we don't want it to be on. I'm adding my transfer tape over and then I'm just going to burnish that down. And peel it away so keep in mind you're still peeling away uh the big part and what we're doing right now is just giving ourselves a stencil mm -hmm. yeah and that's such a good tip with like removing the backing i see a lot of beginners where they'll try and lift the design from the front but if you flip it upside down like you're doing and remove the backing that way it makes it so much easier to go to the transfer date yes absolutely it is and so just kind of working that down. Make sure you get all of your little pieces included in there. And then, oh. So if you guys ever see my camera go black, I am not blacking out on you guys. It just has like a sleep timer almost. So <laughs> don't panic. I'm still here, still with you. I just have to kind of wake it up. <laughs> okay, so we have that on there. And now it is time that I'm going to apply this onto my tumbler. So just like you would a normal design, just lay that on there. Again, we're going to burnish this. This part is important because you don't want to get any bubbles. You don't want to leave any bubbles, any creases, because you don't want your citrus strip to uh, kind of escape and go into those creases. And one hot tip, like literally hot tip, is that you could use a heat gun um, after you've applied your vinyl oh. to the vinyl. And it's going to get rid of any creases, any bubbles, and really give you a nice, crisp, clean design when you're finished. Oh, that's a really good tip. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. It, it helps tremendously, and you really don't realize how much it helps until you start hitting it with that heat gun and seeing all the bubbles like literally melt away. Nice. Okay, so we have this laid down, and then at this point, I'm just going to smooth everything. This is when I would use my heat gun, so I would just... I'm just going to do this for a second because it is so loud. But I would just use this along the edges. And pop those down. Crystal says, is this removable vinyl? It absolutely is. Um, removable vinyl is best for this because it doesn't use a sticky residue. Mm -hmm. And now another great tip for this is I'm going to line the edges with painter's tape. And I'm just, I'm not going to lay it all the way down. I'm going to give myself kind of a catch all so that if any of the citrus strip tries to run, it's going to catch it and not etch the rest of my design. Yeah. I grabbed this painter's tape from Walmart and you can also get most of the other supplies from your Walmart or Target. Just going to line this up <laughs> and create kind of a barrier so that you don't have any room for the citrus strip to mm -hmm. run. Citrus strip, this I actually got from Amazon, but you can also get it at your other uh, local stores like Walmart. 
and this is great because it doesn't have a harsh smell it smells just kind of like citrusy yeah. it's not uh, overbearing or overwhelming so at this point you have a different couple options you can apply this with i'm just going to apply this with a paper towel mm -hmm. and here's what i found is best is instead of completely removing that plastic piece I just punched out a small hole mm -hmm. because then I'm able to kind of contain how much citrus strip I have on the paper towel or the sponge. Mm -hmm. You could also pour this into a cup, but I really like this because I can dab it on yeah. and really cover that. So at this point, any part that you see where the powder coating of the tumbler is applied or where you see the powder coating, that's where you're going to apply the citrus strip. That was kind of a mouthful. <laughs> so yeah, that's such a good tip about poking the hole because I would just like rip off yeah. the whole part. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, like I said, another trial and error thing that I learned is it gives me a little bit of control and it doesn't run so much. Yeah. So now that I have my citrus strip applied, I'm going to leave this for an hour and a half for 90 minutes. Um, the citrus strip instruction says you can leave on to 30 minutes up to 24 hours. But I found that about 90 minutes is the best time for the coated powder or for the powder coated tumbler. Um, and then you can always leave it on a little bit longer if needed. The only thing is you want to make sure that it's not running into the other parts of your tumbler. Mm -hmm. And that's what the kind of what the paper uh, tape comes in for. So now you can see that if it does start to run off on the sides, it's going to be caught by the tape. And every once in a while, I'll just give it a, kind of a little glance, look, and make sure that it's not running off. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave that on there and we're going to let this kind of a strip for 90, so just an hour and a half. So let me grab let's see, this, we're going to flip it. So after 90 minutes is up, you can kind of peel everything away. You're going to peel the whole entire piece of vinyl away and you can already tell that part of it is starting to scrape off and this is etched. So you can even, I use my weeding tool. You can see it in person a lot better, but I can see where it has broken that uh, powder coating down. And what I do is I like to put this up under running warm water and then just really start to give it a scrub. And you will start to see that your design will reveal itself. And all you're left with is that beautiful etching. So cool. Yeah. I never really thought to try something like that, but that's so neat. So essentially you're removing part of the powder coating to create the design. Is that absolutely? Cool? Yes. Okay. So you're just removing that powder coating and then it looks like an etched uh, yeah. design that's left onto your tumbler. That's so and cool. Then yeah, I love it so much. And like, like I said, you can see where it has lifted um, mm -hmm. the design once you get and you're like closer to it. And then you're just going to scrub that off in the water. And then after you get that done, after you have burnished, you have this beautiful etched. Oh, tumbler. my gosh. That's so cool. I love that. I'm going to have to try this. That's just like so pretty. Yes. I love it. I love, I really do love these so much. And like I said, these are perfect for the upcoming holidays. They're completely customizable, personalized and make the perfect gift for others. So That's I would awesome. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just thinking that like with other tumblers that I've done with like the powder coat on it, if I go to try apply like permanent vinyl, sometimes that permanent vinyl won't even stay like you want it to because it's like the powder coat. And that's perfect because you don't have to worry about like the vinyl like peeling off when you're washing it in the you know in the sink or whatever. That's right. so much better. Right. So once we have etched that etched that powder coating away, it is a permanent design. Um, all of these tumblers come with uh, 
you want to hand wash them because they are double walled and you don't want to break that seal. So really the rule of thumb is all tumblers are hand washed. Um, but with these, you are not going to lose that design. Like you said, the vinyl is not going to peel off and yeah. these are permanently etched. I see these selling at stores for 65 to $70 yeah. and you can make these on your own. The citrus strip, uh, your, vinyl and the powder coating powder coated tumbler i don't know why that is so hard for me to say but it is amazing tammy says i just did my first glass etching i was nervous to try that need to try citrus strip so i actually find that this is a little bit easier than the glass etching um with the glass etching it it's a little bit difficult because you want to hit that sweet spot on how long to leave that armor etch on if you're using armor etch to etch with. But with this, it's a good, uh, you you know when this is, I use my weeding tool to kind of lift those pieces to see when they are peeling. And you can just make the most beautiful things. So thank you, Miss Betsy. She loves this design. If you guys have any questions about citrus stripping, I would be happy to answer them. You can drop them in the comment box below wherever you are watching. And then when we get finished with that, it is time to give away a Cricut Maker 3, which I'm so excited to give away. I can't wait to try this, but I have a different brand strip gel. Will that work? It is depending on what your gel is made uh, to break down. So this one tells you uh, kind of what surfaces. It says uh, dried latex, varnish, lacquer, polyurethane, shellac from wood, metal, which is what we are working with. So just kind of read on the directions. But this is truly the best uh medium that I've found to do that etching with is the citrus strip stripping gel. So if you want to, uh, we will have all of the products that you guys need to have to do um, all of these fun things in the description. Is citrus strip toxic? Um, would you, okay, would it mess up the kitchen sink? So it didn't for me. I just leave that uh, water running. And then I do use gloves when I am removing because I don't want to get it on my hands or nails. It is still a chemical, so just be aware of that. But it has um, no harsh fumes, and it is really, really easy to work with. Um, I do recommend to use it in a ventilated area just because you don't want to breathe in unnecessary chemicals. But I've used this in my craft room and my kitchen and had no problems with the kitchen sink. And I do have a stainless kitchen sink, but because I'm using that water running continuously, I'm just scrubbing that off. Um, everything has turned out well so far. The citrus strip work on glass. So I've not used it on the glass. I've only used it on these powder coated tumblers because I'm wanting to remove that layer of uh, the finishing. But I mean, I always am up to try a new task. So for glass, I always use the Armor Etch etching cream instead of the citrus strip. It's so much fun. Abby, you have to show me when you get this done uh, yeah. what the projects look like. For sure, yeah. I have like a few people in mind for Christmas presents that I think I want to give that a try for, so for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Miss Barry says, thank you so much, Abby and Holly and Creative Fabrica for sharing your time and talents with us. It's always an honor to hang out with you guys. Abby, it was such an honor to hang out with you. I love seeing your designs. You can follow Abby on what platforms? You can check out my website and find all of my social media handles on abbykirstencollections.com. Perfect. If you guys want more of me, uh, you can visit my fan page on Creative Fabrica at fans.creativefabrica.com. So I think it's time for a giveaway. Yay. <laughs> okay, you guys, this is the best part of the lot for me. All you have to do to enter into the giveaway, if you're watching, is hashtag CF. That is hashtag CF in the comments where you are watching right now. 
start rolling those in and we are going to be drawing one lucky winner to win a Cricut Maker 3. Now, as those comments are coming in, I do want to remind you that I will be live with Creative Fabrica on Thursday, same time and same place um, to enter oh my gosh to give away a disneyland trip which is amazing i cannot even imagine giving that away that is definitely the biggest giveaway i've ever been a part of yes that's Yay. awesome i love that idea and then like around the holidays too so whoever wins maybe they could surprise their family with it as like a christmas thing that would be so yes. fun yes 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 so excited and this giveaway um is going to change someone's life i feel like it would change mine if i were to win mm -hmm. a trip to disneyland so those hashtag cfs are coming in we're going to give you guys just a little bit to roll those through to make sure that everyone watching has a chance to enter. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Thank you to Abby for sharing your amazing talents and tips with us. Thank you to Creative Fabrica for hosting this live and for always giving back to our creative community so much. All right. So you guys, if you are ready, Abby, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, you guys. So we are going to give away a Cricut Maker 3. And we are drawing names now. This is chosen by Random Giveaway. And our winner is, oh, I saw Creative Fabrica. <laughs> Jacqueline's own. So, Miss Jacqueline, you are the winner of the Cricut Maker 3. Please email hi, that's hi at creativefabrica.com to let them know that you've won. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Abby, for joining us. Yes, absolutely. It was so much fun. I love crafting with you. Yes, and we will see you guys soon. Be sure to join me back right here on Thursday so that I can participate, too, in the giveaway of a trip to Disneyland. So happy holidays to you and to everyone watching, and we will see you guys next time.